so I'm just about to uh, reacquaint with my article where I had left off and uh, it's kind of I've been working on this article for a long time now and I'm kind of it became so so big okay and I'm not like a professional writer at this stage it seems like I am really dragging this out so slow the, the last time I talked about it, I talked about it, it was great fun and that but now it's become I know I could complete this article, article and finish it and things that's not the problem the intellectual stuff the writing it's just that it takes so long it's laborious before it used to be so much pleasure but now it's just laborious but because of the end result, the kind of pleasure you get from producing that stuff, right, it's worth continuing. And I think if anyone, if you write anything, even 100 pages, or 200 pages, 300 pages, if that's all you've ever done in your life, that's, that's immense. Especially if it's good, complicated and intellectual stuff, okay, and relative to maybe things that people are interested in things. That is a great... Uh, that is something you should you could be proud of because that is very difficult to do and I know that and I'm good at writing that's why I eventually uh, if you keep doing these things uh, you get better and better and better you never get worse so in the end you'll probably end up mastering these things if you keep at it long enough you punctuation these things they start to understand like uh, the construction of sentences, how they join together, answering things, explaining things, breaking away. These things, nobody needs to teach you these things. You could pick that up for yourself eventually as a writer. That's where I was, that's where I am as a writer. But although I get immense pleasure from doing these things, uh, talking about the things I've discovered, it's a laborious task to write all that together and put out 100 pages or 200 pages. It's, it's very tiring. Uh, and uh, it's something you live with for maybe six months or a year. That's a long time. Breivik, he lived with his article for five years. He worked on that article. So that must have been... Uh, that's an immense challenge for someone to do. Five years to work on an article. That's an incredible thing. And David Icke, he, he said that he wrote... I think he said he wrote five books in three years. Now, that's, an, that's amazing. I, I barely made it over... 100 pages and that's I've been working on this article right, for a year okay <laughs> a whole year I've been working on this article and I merely barely made it over 100 pages but in my defense if I had to increase the font uh, to say a, a normal font it would be well over probably be up to around about 300 pages that's what I think so anyway, I, what I'll do, I'll run across, because I want to reacquaint with this article, I'll run through, if I could remember, I'm just starting to, it takes you a while to get back into your article, and you've got to remember everything, the Breivik story, Rousseau, the communists, the, you've got to remember all that stuff, get it back in your head. I have to fit in my calendar, my, my Stonehenge temple, I have to fit that into that context also, so that'll take me a little bit of a time to get that stuff back in my hand so I, I got to watch for right, reiterating myself or contradicting myself I'm aware of these things and that's a massive that's a massive faux pas to do that right? that's, a, that's a massive mistake to be a hypocrite or repeat yourself too much in an article that's not so good that means you've lost control over your article right? so I started this article with Breivik, he was the inspiration behind it, the kind of things that happened to Breivik. How he was born from that uh, post-war, or pre-war, sorry, left-right conflict, and the kind of things that led him to do what he did. And after that, I was tracing, I began, Breivik gave me that, when, after reading his article, I got that, he remembered me, he reminded me of people like uh, uh, Felix Wheel the Grunbergs and uh, the Frankfurt School. This is the first time I've thought about these things since I was writing about it in the Institute for Social Research. I started thinking about stuff I'd learned in the past. So I went, I I decided to, to write a bit about what I know about that stuff, the multicultural agenda, where it came from. And 
in the end, I, I came a long time ago, I came to understand that, as far as I'm aware, that through studying history and things, I identified that Rome was the, the promoter and founder of this egalitarian society, pushing these multicultural ideals. Uh, they were doing that in a dishonest context, as everyone did afterwards, the equality hoax. So after Rome, the, obviously the church was promoting these things. Then after Rome and the church, you see things like the Hanoverians in Great Britain, they were promoting that egalitarian society. Anyone could be English, okay? They were using foreigners against the natives, that's what I believe. Uh, and there, this is also when they were displacing or cleansing the highlands, uh, using egalitarian societies against them. But I think there was much more to it than that. So after the Hanoverians, you see things like, uh, now let me think, uh, the Hanoverians, they were about the, uh, let me think, uh, from 1714, I think it was, possibly even 1716, but I think 1714, I've not thought about this for a little while. <coughs> this was uh, the, the first Jacob, Jacobite uprising, controlled by the elite, to agitate the people, so they could kill the people, that's what I believe. And the second Jacobite uprising in 1745 at Culloden, 1746, they were conspiracies uh, just to raise the people against the royal and clan, uh, the Hanoverian government so they could kill the people and issue new laws and that against them. So I think uh, these, the Hanoverians, they were the guys who were doing this in England, okay, sorry. <coughs> Sorry, it's my heater, right? It's making me a little bit uh, dry. Look okay, at my heater. That's much cheaper than the, flat, uh, the gas. Uh, let me think, where was it? So the, the Romans, the, the Holy Roman Empire, the Church, uh, the Hanoverians, and after that, you see the rise of things like Rousseau and things in France, led to the Rousseau, Voltaire. Rousseau was around about 1754. Uh, I think, if I remember Voltaire, now let me think, I think he was 1761, and obviously Payne was around in America at this thing also. Now they came, they came just before the French Revolution in 1789, and I believe that was also a ruling class conspiracy to justify and encourage the people to rise up against the establishment so they could, they could uh, kill the people, that's what I believe. And I also believe they killed Mary Antoinette and Louis XVI to... Uh, make, to make the people trust the, the new leaders that they were going to give them. At least that's a theory of mine. That they, they set up the king and queen. Because the people, I believe, the Industrial Revolution, feudalism, the people didn't believe the elite so much. So they needed to do something drastic. If they kill the king and queen, the network, okay, they could, the people will believe them and they could kill 10 million, 20 million people. So this is what happened. After Napoleon in 1815 surrendered, Twice they caught Napoleon, remember, twice they failed to execute him. In 1815, the Grand Army was, everyone who was in the army was basically dead. And it was only in 18, uh, let me think, uh, 1815, 1821, six years after Napoleon was surrendered to the British, he died in exile. So twice they caught Napoleon, and he was in his wars against the ancient regimes, and twice they failed to execute Napoleon. I also see that as a... Napoleon was his uh, task with leading the people in a war against the ancient regimes so the uh, ruling classes could kill the people and this is what actually did happen, okay? Now after the French Revolution you see things like uh, the, oh, I, let me think, it was the War of Independence 1776, okay? Sorry, that came before uh, that came before the French Revolution, I'm sorry. Uh, now, after that, <coughs> let me just think about this for a little minute, because I haven't thought about this for uh, a little while, okay? <coughs> now, 1776 was the American War of Independence. Then Payne was on the scene, but Rizzo and that were promoting these things in 1754, okay? Came the French Revolution. Now just after that, it led to, I would think after that we see people like, I'm just thinking if I missed anything out, 
I will miss a lot out of course, but just to run over some of these things. Uh, we see the rise of Karl Marx and communism and the, uh, the 18, let me think, the 18... Uh, the 1848 publication of the Communist Manifesto. So this was this was uh, the the communists. Okay, they were doing the same thing that the French socialists were doing. They were giving the people, encouraging the people to rise up against the elites. And I believe they were doing that uh, in the Orwellian sense to so the elites can uh, crush the people. Okay, now that was at the the middle of the 19th century. So, after that, okay, we see things like, uh, let me think now, you have things like uh, in the 1900s, Bose, the Bosian School of Anthropology, they were supporting multicultural ideologies in America, right? That was uh, in the 1900s. We have uh, World War One, of course, 1914 to 1918, that was also a ruling class conspiracy to Ebert and Hindenburg and Spartacus, they were all conspiring, agitate for war, they got the war, they killed 20 million, they constructed the Weimar Socialist Republic, and that was their special deal, they all got out of jail free, uh, about 20 million people died, so after World War I, uh, they were, the multicultural agenda was rife by that time of course, uh, this led to I would think by that time this led to the National Socialists under Adolf Hitler catching these guys and uh, this is what this is actually what led to World War II. All this multicultural agenda, all this uh, the elite uh, giving your nations away to the whole world, even like today they give your nations away to immigrants and things, that culminated in the rise of National Socialists and Hitler trying to defeat these guys and get his nation back out of their hands and he blamed the Jews for that but I would say the Jews, you should see them more as Eastern European white people they're the interlopers and their religion is Jewish religion of course but they are European guys and they're just part of that elite ruling class network some of them are Protestants, some of them are Catholics Okay, I also see that as a war strategy now after World War II they gave you things like the United Nations, uh, they gave you the welfare state of course, every time they kill a big bunch of people they have to give you something back so you think that they like you, they care for you, that's how they give you the NHS and the welfare state. Uh, the UN was constructed and after that the multicultural agenda that Hitler was worried about and tried to stop that went full force and it led to in America the 1957 Forced Integration Act where the although the senators kept the senate whites and they kept their own senators white they were forcing your schools and they kept most of, most of their own schools white of course they were for, but they had some non-whites in those schools to keep up appearances I believe they were forcing non-whites into their classrooms and I believe they did that not because they're idealistic or humane and kind uh, that they thought that would work it's better for us I think they did that in a dishonest context just like Rome and they did that for what we have today mass chaos police state uh, racial tensions national tensions the rise of native peoples wanting their nations but and the government calling them Nazis and where we are today is the culmination of all those things and where we are today is where the elites wanted us to be okay this is why they constructed the uh, this is why okay after the UN was constructed this is why you see things like after the Berlin Wall collapsed in 89 uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union uh, and let me think mm, 1991, just after that, you see the signing of the Maastricht Treaty under the European Union. Now, the Maastricht Treaty, signed by, they were honoured by Labour and the Conservative Party. They actually allowed 50 million, 2 million a year immigrants, and that was 26 years ago in Great Britain. So right there, you could see that that was irresponsible. It's unfair, very unfair. You can't even get a job or a house in Britain so much anymore. Uh, I think that is enough, okay, at the moment. Uh, I have recycled a lot of information and uh, it's, it's easy, I'm not feeling so uh, 
opened in the mind at the moment, okay, to go into these things in great detail, because it's easy to get lost, so I leave that for my article. But those are some of the things I'll be talking about in my article. Um, Breivik was the inspiration behind it. He, he reminded me of things. Before I got hurt by these guys on these websites, he reminded me of things. I was studying the Jewish angle, like guys like David Duke, Professor MacDonald. I was watching Jones's videos, Ike's videos, the New World Order, okay? But I also had a, a Jewish context, but I wasn't going around accusing them of doing things. I was like, I took a, a different perspective. I acknowledge that they're part of that elite network, but I don't acknowledge it's a Jewish network. I think that's just a war strategy for these guys to deflect the blame from themselves. Instead of looking at the Conservative Party or the Republican Party, they want you to look at the Jews. They are the Jews, the secret rulers behind everything, okay? And I just see that as a, a, a war tactic. So I think uh, I'll just have a little think for a moment, okay? Uh, now, when Marx came on the scene, obviously you had things like the, the uh, you think the not was, I think it was 1846, 1848, I just, I just slipped my mind for a moment, okay, the great famines and things in Great Britain. Uh, now, Marx, he said that the Highland Clearances was, uh, oh, the, the people responsible for it was the capitalists. Okay, but he didn't mention the Haroverian regimes or anything like that. And I also discovered that the first, I think it was just after the Glorious Revolution, William the uh, Third. I think he was the first. Uh, sorry, sorry, just before that, or Oliver Cromwell. Uh, now, she killed Ch Charles the First died in. Uh, what do you think? 1649. But Cromwell, he was one of the first guys to military marching at the islands and uh, build bases right to oppress the islands. He says he was oppressing the Catholics and stuff of course. But I think it was more a racial angle to these things. Uh, so I, I identified some good things from my art school but Cromwell started these attacks on the islanders but the Hanoverians and all the way back to let me think fourteen eighty five with Henry the Henry Tudor the seventh, okay. This was the takeover of Britain by these interlopers, taking over the Anglo Saxons. and uh, they are assuming their identity, oppressing these guys. They were using Cromwell, King William. They were all right up to the Hanoverians. They were after these guys. And in the end, they got them through guys like interloper double agents like Bonnie Prince Charlie, uh, the old pretender and the, the young pretender. So that's, that's what you think it was all about. They, the, 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 the new revolution that Engels talked about, okay, uh, it was the racial takeover of the last. The Uncle Saxon and Nordic Celtic lands by the Slavs, that's what I believe, by Slavic leaders pretending to be these people. And that's what he was referring to. And uh, just let me think for a moment. Uh, I just completely lost my phone. Uh, I will just leave the video there, okay? So, uh, I hope uh, I've not bored people so much with my videos. Uh, it was just, uh, I don't think uh, we live in such a normal society anymore. And it's easy to get lose track of yourself, lose track of time. You've not got any structure or order. Like, get up in the morning and go to work and things like that. See, so you just end up just like, messing around your life, your hobbies and things become your life, okay, that's why I kind of, that was kind of my downfall, uh, the destruction, the destruction of European civilization, what we're living in today, that led me just to drift away into my hobbies and study things that I'm interested in things, and that's what led me to get into trouble on the internet, so just be very careful if you're doing these things, okay, because it is dangerous, uh, and the government are conspiring against the people and they set websites and things up to catch people so be very careful you'll never think it'll happen to you until it happens to you uh, well I was hoping Engels may have came back to me but I had a thought in my hand about Engels but obviously it didn't okay